I won't be here tomorrow. Oh, this is your last block. Yeah, let's call some hands. All right, so we're going to go to the bell ringer. So on your physical science path, if you, if you click on today's activity, let me get a suit of you. If you click under here, today's activities, it should bring you to, you want to go down to week seven. How are you going to let me just leave this? He's going to let me leave the most important thing. I'm going to find week seven and look for Wednesday, February 17th. Submit, but yours should say submit. So you're going to click on that so you can get your text box. And a text box should pop up underneath this right here. So what I usually do is I go through these questions and we ask them together and you type the answer in. And it's extra credit points. So if you do what I do, then you get those extra credit points. Okay? So, um, we're going to write, um, number one is define compound, and you weren't here, Nazir, but a while back we did mention what a compound was. Do you happen to know what a compound is? No, let's, let's take the science as this. Physical. No, I don't think that's what this is. Okay. All right, so a compound is two or more elements chemically combined. And then the other three questions we haven't, we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to go ahead and answer them uh, for everybody. So why do elements form compounds? And that is they want to be stable. So to be stable. And when are when is an element most stable? When it has a full or complete outer energy level, that means eight valence electrons. Um. That means what? Eight valence electrons. Let's see if I can make this. Yeah, because so I can't really see. But better. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And you can set in that front desk if you want, because yeah. it's not here today. <laughs> Well, you said full? Full or complete. All right, the last is give an example of the chemical formula and what it tells you about the compound. So I'm going to use water. The chemical formula for water is H, capital H. And if you click on this um, T with the two up here, the down arrow, choose the one with the two, uh, the two at the bottom. When you hover over it, it says subscript. You'll put a two there. Then you're going to click back on this to turn it off and then capital O. 
That's the chemical formula for water. The other part of the question said, what does this mean? Um, the little two there comes after the H. That means there are two atoms of hydrogen. So two atoms of hydrogen uh, chemically um, bound to is two. And there's no number with the O, so that is one atom of oxygen. And we're going to talk about that today. So when you get that, all four, then you're going to click, scroll down and click Submit Assignment. You got it typed in? Yeah, you should have it. Okay. Just click Submit Assignment. And when we submit something in Canvas, it's a Canvas tool. It should, you'll notice it'll say resubmit here, but you should have gotten that confetti and I have pieces yeah, of that. that fell down. Um, we're going to go back to modules. Sometimes you can click the next button, but um, I got a little off my uh, schedule, so I'm going to make sure. I'm, I can't remember if I, I didn't do it. All right, we're going to go here to notes, stability, and bonding. Now, if you're going to do yours on paper, you don't necessarily have to go here, but I want to show you something. You're going to do yours on paper. So when this, um, down here, there's a cami that's, uh, if this comes up on yours, you're going to sign in with Google. Yours may ask you to link, um, and you would follow those directions. Um, this allows you to type. So if you were to do an assignment on the computer, you would click the text box and you could type over here. You could click the drawing tool and draw. You can actually insert pictures. But if you're, you're doing yours on paper, go ahead and click the submit button up here. And then it will come up with a, another submit button and click submit here. And what that does is it's submitting a blank copy, but that lets me know that, um, remind me to make sure that I've recorded a grade for you and not to count it for a zero, okay? So if you were to do something online for me in a CAMI, you would um, complete it, and then that's how you would submit within a CAMI. Yeah. Um, just to go. So up here, I always have the notes. So I'm going to make these big here. And we're going to talk about um, a lot of stuff that deals with um, just the beginnings of chemical bonding. And then the next several days, we're going to do bits and pieces of it to practice. So we'll get all the notes taken care of today. And then each piece of it, we're going to do a little bit each day to um, reinforce what was in the notes. Now, the only issue is by not doing it on the computer, if you were to need to refer back to the notes, say on Friday when you're working at home, you would have to use the PowerPoint. You wouldn't have the fill in the blanks to refer to. But the PowerPoint is always there. All right, so um, the last unit, um, which you missed, Nazir, is was all about just the atom, what makes up the atom, and so forth. And to give you a little bit of background, an atom has um, protons and neutrons in the center in the nucleus. And then around here, we have something called electrons. And so we're going to be looking at um, how atoms interact with each other in this first little, or in this unit. Um, so to begin with, I always have a little vocabulary here. So Elements in nature aren't going to be found by themselves, um, generally. So a periodic table. Oh, right there here. Um, if there's blank, so look right here, and blank elements. So most elements. You're just looking for the missing words. I'll give you a periodic table here mm -hmm. that you can refer to. So on a periodic table, most of the elements that are on there. Um, don't want to be by themselves. They like to be partnered up with another element. Except for this last column here. They're our loners. They like to be by themselves. 
They don't want to be joined to any other element. So this last group here, the noble gases, they are stable naturally. They don't, will not combine. Other elements will form compounds. That's when two or more of them will chemically combine. So that's the next thing, two or more. Oh, you got it. Um, and so what happens when this, happen, this uh, chemically combination happens, they chemically bind together, they have different properties in the original elements. And so let's look at table salt. Table salt, and I'm going to turn this first row, it's getting a little bright. Um, table salt is made up of sodium. Sodium is found here in column one. It's a metal. It's a very reactive metal. And chlorine, which is found in 7A or group 17 here, is a very reactive, gaseous, poisonous, non-metal. Well, when they form a compound together, we get table salt that we use to season our food. So it has a- And that's just when chlorine is out the pool? Yeah. And then they'll use um, chlorine, um, like a chlorine compound to put in the pool to help clean it and keep it um, disinfected. Uh, chlorine is also in Clorox, um, but it's in a compound in there. So it's not pure chlorine. So it's pure chlorine by itself is poisonous. Uh, Clorox is also poisonous, um, so you wouldn't want to consume it. But when it's mixed with sodium, you get table salt. It's our food seasoning. And so it has different properties than the individual elements. So compounds create new substances. And we represent them with a chemical formula. So a chemical formula is what we use to tell what elements are in a compound and how much of that element are in that compound. Kind of like what I did in the bell ringer. So for example, this is what I, the example I did in the bell ringer. Water is H2O. That's its chemical formula. That means it is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Um, and this is what a molecule or a compound of water would look like. NH3, ammonia, is another cleaner that we use in the house to clean things. It is NH3, so it has one nitrogen atom and three atoms of hydrogen. So yes. that one that one atom of oxygen is how the fish is alive in the water? No. Oh. Um, fish use they I'm not sure how they're getting the oxygen from I don't know if it's from the water or from other things. So and these are just pictures that represent what this is right here. So you can see there's one nitrogen and three hydrogens. The three, the number always goes with the letter that's in front of it. Oops. All right, so to form compounds, uh, atoms want to be stable. That is the whole reason. They want to have eight valence electrons. It's the octet rule. Oct, O-C-T, means eight. So atoms will either give up, um, take, or share electrons um, to have eight in their outer energy level. And that is the rule that they follow in order to be stable. Now, this works for every element except for hydrogen and helium. On your periodic table, hydrogen and helium are in what we call period one. One's at one end and one's at the other. They only have one energy level, and that energy level only holds two electrons. So they're stable because their energy level is full. All the other elements have to have eight to be full or stable. Oh, wait, go back, go back. Now, in our last unit, we also looked at how to make... Oh, no, wait. Um, no, 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 no. So sure? Yeah. Got it? All right. Now, um, there will be things on either side here that you're going to um, fill out here. This is called a Bohr model. You see where all the electrons are located. 
So this is the nucleus of the atom. It's that proton here in the nucleus. This first ring contains electrons. It can only hold two. The second ring can hold up to eight. And the third ring actually holds more than eight, but for what we're doing, we say eight. So this last ring is the one we're concerned about. If it doesn't have eight, it is not stable. So you will see that sodium has one valence electron, and it wants to lose it because that doesn't take a lot of energy for it to be lost. And then it will be have a full state there. It will have the eight electrons that are on the second row. So this one green electron here, it wants to lose. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, two, four, six, seven. It wants to gain one electron so that it will be full, so it will be stable. And so to, um, there's those seven. So what happens is sodium, when it's in the presence with chlorine, it will gladly give away its one electron to chlorine, and that sticks them together. It works like glue, and they form sodium chloride, which is table salt. So this is how a bond is going to happen between an element like sodium and chloride, or chlorine. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Okay, I'm so, if you're in this group 17, that very last group, group 7A, if you're in that group, you're not going to benefit from forming compounds because they're already stable. And that is what I had already said at one time. So, they're already stable. They have a full outer energy shell. Helium, remember, only has the one level and only can hold two, so it's stable. Neon has eight. Argon has eight. So any in that last column, their outer energy level is full. They are stable. They're non-reactive. They will not form compounds. Oh, that's easy. Which, uh, no, 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 that's easy, right? Yeah. If you put it all in one place, it's fine. Just yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're going to be looking at in this unit is bonds, this glue that is holding um, these elements together. And so atoms, by sharing, gaining, or losing electrons, it creates a bond, which is like glue. It's a force that holds these um, atoms together. And we have um, two main types of bonds that we're going to look at. Um, ionic bonds is the first one. These are the bonds that will gain or lose electrons. We call that transferring electrons in order to be stable. This is very, very important. It's going to be between a metal and a non-metal. It's going to be between a metal and a non-metal. Now, notice it says usually because we've got, um, there's a couple metalloids that, um, behave like non-metals, and then we're going to learn about some other ions that are made up of multiple non-metals, but it's going to be a metal and a, another ion uh, for ionic bonds, typically metal and non-metal. And the, it forms what we call an ion. So ionic bonds, uh, involve ions, and so there's two types of ions. We have something called, I pronounce it cations, 
you may hear um, one of the videos I have, they pronounce it cation or something like that, but it's, it's cation. Um, it's a positively charged ion. So I want us to think about math a minute. So electrons are negative and protons are positive and normally they're equal. So that would be in math if I have a negative 2 plus a positive 2, I get 0. That means there would be no charge. So if my electrons and my protons are both the same number, there's no charge. But an ion has a charge. So if we take magnesium here, it has 12 protons and 12 electrons in that drawing. But if it gives two of those away, it then has 10 electrons and 12 protons. So it has 10 negative charges, but 12 positive charges. Which number is larger, 12 or 10? 12. 12. It's positive, so it's going to create a positive ion because it has more protons because it gave away an electron. So magnesium wants to give away its two electrons, so we say it has a two plus charge. So it's a cat ion. Your metals will lose electrons, so they're going to have a plus charge. Your so those two, it wants to give away, and I don't know if that needs to be filled in or not. It may be over on the side or somewhere. Um, so two valence electrons, it wants to lose it to be stable. So that means it's going to have more protons. It's going to have a plus two charge. So it's going to be plus two. A lot of times you'll see it two plus. And this is how your metals are going to behave when we're talking about ionic bonds. Now you have ions that are negatively charged. They're called anions and they are going to gain electrons. So if I look at oxygen here, oxygen has two, four, five, six um, outer energy levels. So it has eight protons and eight electrons normally. It wants no. Yes, but it's going to, it only has six in its outer energy level. It needs two more. So if I add two more to this, that means it is 10 electrons. Which number is larger? 10. 10. It's negative. So oxygen is going to have a negative charge, two negative, because it now is taken more negative charges than it normally would have. So that's what that says there. Now I've got two examples and they're going to be over on that side there that you're going to fill in on the next. So with the lithium here, if we look at this outermost ring, it has one electron. So right here is green. Lithium has one. So if it has one electron, it's going to want to lose it to be stable. So if it loses an electron, it's going to have more protons, so it's going to be positive and it only lost one, so it'll be plus one. A lot of times we don't put the one there. We will just write Li plus, uh, for chlorine, it would be Cl minus. Um, we usually just use the sign. We don't put the number one. All right, now nitrogen. Nitrogen on your periodic table, if you look, is in column 5A. 
and um, it is a non-metal. It has five valence electrons. It wants three more to be stable, so it's going to gain three electrons. That's going to make it have more electrons than protons, so it's going to have a negative charge. So nitrogen would be uh, N minus three or N three minus. You may see it written with the uh, minus sign at the end. Uh, I'll see you next week. Thank you, Miss Noel. Oh. Take care. All right. All right. Now, to continue with ions, yeah, it's um, where there's this right. So, um, elements in the same group. So, on your periodic table where you see the 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, that number is its group number. So, if they're in the same column, they have the same number of valence electrons. So lithium is in 1A. Lithium's going to have one valence electron. So that group number tells you how many valence electrons. We're not worried about the ones in the middle that have a B with them. We're only worried about the A's. Because of this, they form ions the same way. So if you look here, lithium, sodium, and potassium are all in column one, group one. So they're all going to have one valence electron. So they're all going to have a plus one charge. This would be Li plus, Na plus, K plus. They're in the same group. If they're in group two, like beryllium, magnesium, calcium, they would be two plus. If they're in group three, they would be three plus. Group four, it can be either or. Group five would be um, minus three and so forth. So the group number is going to help with determine the charge. This charge has a special name. It's called oxidation number. So the oxidation number, so the last little part is right there. Um, oh. Right. Okay, charge of the ion within a compound, that is an oxidation number. It's always written as a superscript, that means up in the air, to the right of the symbol, to the right of the symbol. So group one elements will have, and I have just printed already on the side of the notes there, a plus one charge, group two, a plus two, we skip 3 through 12. They do weird things. Sometimes they may have 2, sometimes they may have 3, they may have 4. There's changes, and they can have multiple charges. So we skip them for our level uh, in physical science. Group 13 has 3. Group 14 can either be plus or minus 4. Oops. Then on 15, 16, 17, or 5A, 6A, and 7A, you take the group number and say, how many more do I need to get to eight? So this is group five. How many more to get to eight would be three, so it's minus three. How many more to get to eight from six is two, minus two. How many more to get to se um, get from seven to eight is one, so it'd be minus one. So that's all written right here on your note page. Now, um, we're going to practice today um, learning how to count some atoms. Tomorrow, we're going to look at recognizing um, chemical bonds, or whether it's ionic or covalent. And then we're going to look at this right here, but I'll go ahead and take you through the steps today. So electron dot diagrams. This is going to show just the valence electrons. So um, when we look at this, you are going to see the symbol and the dots are going to represent just the valence electrons. And you'll get that from the group number. So here's the steps. When drawing these or writing these, you will place the atomic symbol for the nucleus. So you will get that symbol off your periodic table. 
It will be a capital letter or a capital letter with a lowercase letter. Like 4BTR? Right. So you're saying? Right. And don't um, it, it, don't write it with a capital I. It has to be a lower. Yeah. The second one has to be lowercase. You're going to determine the number of valence electrons. That's the group number. That's the number with the A that's on top of each column. And this is going to be our valence electrons that we're going to draw by putting dots around the chemical symbol. And I'm going to show you how you fill that up. You, you do it clockwise. So here's an example. So we're going to pop back up here. If I take nitrogen, I'm going to write the symbol first. I'm going to find nitrogen on the periodic table. And nitrogen is in 5A. So it's going to have five valence electrons. So I'm going to start at the top. And I'm going to go clockwise, putting one on each side. That's four. Then I'm going to start going clockwise again, five. Draw that. Oh, yes, put those dots around that hand. See, I've got the black hand already there. You can oh. draw the dots around it. That's fine. We're going to put some practice ones down there. So you always start at the top, the one on each side, and then start pairing them up. Like that? Yep, it matches mine up here. All right, so now we're going to practice. So hydrogen, we're going to look on the periodic table, and we're going to see that hydrogen is in group, I write that down. I it's group 1A, and this is the practice down here. So you're going to put an H, and because it's in group 1, it's going to have one dot on the top. So then I'm going to find carbon. Carbon is in group 4A. Its symbol is C. So I'm going to put a C. It's in group 4A. So it has four dots, one on the top, the side, the bottom, and the side. Chlorine. I'm going to look on the periodic table. It's in group 7A. Its symbol is F. So I'm going to put an F. It has seven. I'm going to start at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to stop. It has one place for a electron. Then I'm going to do phosphorus. If I look on the periodic table, phosphorus is below nitrogen. It's in group 5A. Its symbol is P. If it's in group 5A, it means it's, there's five. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to make sure I have five dots. And that's called uh, Lewis dot diagrams. And we're going to have some practice with that um, if, um, maybe Monday. I don't think we'll get to it tomorrow. Now, once we get used to making uh, Lewis dot diagrams like this, we can use them to show how elements bond. How elements bond. So we've got one last little thing in our notes. And so here, we can use these electron dot diagrams to show bond formation. So how you would do this is you will take the Electron dot structure for the elements that are in the compound. You're going to transfer electrons using an arrow going from metal to nonmetal. And you're going to add elements in case you need more elements. And you will continue transferring until all atoms are stable. 
all have given away all their um, electrons or they have received enough to have eight around them. And then you'll write the chemical formula with subscripts of how many of each element were needed. So we're going to do some examples um, down at um, two examples and then I think on the back Uh, yeah, on the back, there's a practice time. When I copied it, I have a, for those with paper, there's a side that doesn't have anything on it. So when you're doing these, so you'll I'll do some, all the examples? Which yeah, one? We'll do two examples, and then we'll do practice on the back. Okay. Um, so to do these, you need access to your periodic table. So... Um, I'm going to do them on the board and then I'll show them up here. So what compound will form between sodium and chlorine? So I'm going to look for sodium. Sodium, I'm going to always start with the first column and it's going to be Na. So I'm going to put an Na. It is in group 1A, so I know I can have one dot. Chlorine, I'm always for the second one going to look in one of these over here, usually six or seven A. Well, chlorine is in seven A, so I am going to write a CL, and it's in seven A, so I'm going to start. Chlorine with is for um, example two, right? No, we're still here. An example one? Yes, sodium and chlorine. Oh, okay, okay. So it has seven, so I start by going around like this. Until I have seven dots. Now, what is going that's on? That's a capital I? No, that's an L. Oh. Lowercase? Lowercase. So, so, what's going to happen here is sodium. Remember, it's a metal. It only has one. It wants to give it away. So it's going to give this electron away over here to chlorine. So I draw an arrow from the metal to the nonmetal. Now chlorine, if that dot moves here, has eight. Nine, um, sodium got rid of this one valence electron. It has eight, so it's stable. So we would only have one sodium and one chlorine. We write it like this for the... Example one? This is still example one. So up here, showing it on the computer. Draw the arrow. And it makes this one full, so it's just N-A-C-L. And that's going to be the hard part. Um, the lowercase l's look like capital I's because of the computerized lettering. But if it's like this, it's going to be a lowercase l. Now, example two. We're still using chlorine, but this time we're using aluminum. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put my chlorine down because I just used it. And I know that it has seven. <clears throat> aluminum, I'm going to look, and I happen to have it memorized. It's in group three, the second one down. So it is AL. So I'm going to have an AL. And it's in group three. I'm going to have three dots. <clears throat> now, chlorine just needs one. Aluminum still has two to give away. AL, right? Yes. Remember it said that you may have to draw more elements. I'm going to need another chlorine. So I'm going to put a chlorine here, and I'm going to show my seven dots. This um, electron is going to go to this chlorine. Well, I still have one more dot in aluminum. I'm going to need another chlorine. <clears throat> So 
So it took three chlorines in order for aluminum to get rid of its three valence electrons. So when I go to write this, I have one AL, but I have three CL. So when I put CL, I'm going to put a little three there. So you may have to add extra of one of the elements if you haven't used them all or if they haven't gotten eight around them. All right, we're gonna do a few practice ones on the back. Excuse me, I gotta get this. Hello? Yes. Okay, I probably won't be there until a little bit after four. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. All right, so on the back of that page, we have some more practice that we're going to do. And so I'm going to do a little board and then we'll pop them up and see what they say on the computer there. So we have potassium. Potassium for your metals, always start in column one on the periodic table and look. Um, so I'm going to go down and I see that potassium symbol is K and it is in column one. So I'm going to put K and I'm going to put a dot. And chlorine, well we just did chlorine so I happen to know it's CL with seven dots. And so again, my potassium, which is the metal, is going to give to the non-metal, and it only has one to give and one to receive there. So KCL is the final answer written all together. Oops, I didn't do that one yet. All right, magnesium. I'm going to look on my periodic table. Magnesium is in group 2A, is the second one down, it's MG, so that means it has two dots, and fluorine. Fluorine is in the same group as chlorine, so it has seven. Mm -hmm. Now, when I give one, my fluorine is now full. It has eight. I have one left. That means I have to add another fluorine. When I give this last one of magnesium to the fluorine, I'm finished. I have one Mg, so I just write the symbol for Mg. Next to it, I write F but I have two Fs and I put a subscript of a two. Change the times along. That's this one. All right, two more examples. Aluminum we had a while ago, and it was in 3A. So I know that for aluminum, it's going to have three dots. And it is combining with nitrogen. I know the symbol is N, and it is in column 5A. So it has five dots. Two, three, four, five. Now, when I go to draw these, one goes here, one goes here, and one goes over here. So I now have two, four, six, eight. 
So I didn't need to add any more. So I have AL. Which one is that one? Aluminum? Yes, N. So up here, if you want to see it on the computer. Has three dots, A? Yes, AL has three dots. Has and then that's N by itself? Yes, N is by itself. Okay. I'm almost on the other side. What's up on the screen now? Oh, okay. All right, the last one, magnesium. I'm going to look in the first two columns for magnesium. It's in 2A. So it's going to have two dots. So I'm going to have MG two dots. Then I've got phosphorus, which is P. It is underneath nitrogen in 5A. And so this one's a little bit more complicated because phosphorus only needs three. Magnesium has two of them. So I'm going to end up having to add some. So I'm going to put one here and one here. I'm going to have to add another magnesium because it still has one here. So, well, now phosphorus is full, but this magnesium still has one. So I have to add another P. And when I add the P, it's going to have the five dots. This takes care of here. Well, there's still two empty places on this P. I need one more magnesium. So when it gives over here and over here, this P is full. Each one of them is now full. So I have MG. There are three of them three, and I have P, and there are two of them. So they can get pretty complicated doing them this way. So let me show it up here on the screen. And so like I said, first part, part of next week, we'll get more into this. Um, so that finishes the notes. So if you did them on the computer, you would press the submit button. If you didn't do them on the computer, um, you're going to have them on paper and I will record a grade for you at the end of class. How much is the grade by the class? How much is the grade? Notes are 20 points. That's like 20, right? What, like 20 out of 20. All right, so you'll go to the next school. Here. Oh, come back. Come back. So uh, you're on this. Let me show that. Let's not get things. You go back to the phone. Yeah. Okay, scroll down and find physical science. Get the purple in there. Click on it. And then click on today's activities. And we're going to go to week seven. So it needs activity. That's what today's activity is right under. So scroll down slowly. So this thing right here. Right? You scroll down, not on it, scroll it's right under it. So see today's activities. And then go down to week seven. Wednesday. Now we haven't done the video. The video you may have to do at home. We don't, probably don't have a lot of time to do it in class. But this video is an Ed puzzle. You watch the video and you answer questions as you watch it. Um, but right now we're going to go to practicing counting atoms. So um, here again, um, Nazir, you'll want to click on the submit because you're going to do it on paper. When it pops up, click the submit button and then click the second submit button when yours pops up, okay? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do it on paper. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to attempt 
to open it in Cami. This didn't work earlier, so I can write on board with it. Miss Noel. Yes. Um, I won't have my Chromebook later on tonight because I'm gonna borrow my cousin's charger because mine's broke, and I'll just turn in your work tonight. Okay. Well, I can. If I get it in before 11, will I get counted absent? Well, you're going to be counted absent until the work is turned in. And when the work is turned in, oh, okay, okay. Denied, then you'll be counted present. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. All right. Let's see if I can get this open on the. And All right, so now I can write it here. It just didn't want to work this morning. So let me explain what we're doing here before we before we start doing any of the problems. So what you're going to do is you need to understand something up here. So I'm going to highlight something here. This number here, I call it the big number. Oops, I didn't want the whole thing highlighted. I'm going to use my mouse for this part. Um, it's called a coefficient. So let me get into that and try again. All right, this number right here is a coefficient. It is telling you that I have two sets of H2O. Now, this number, the subscript, tells you that I have two H's in one H2O. All right? So if it helps, um, another way of looking at this, and I'm going to type it right on top Text box. Here we go. So what that first two means is I have H. I have to go here. No, wrong one. This one. Two. Oh. And I have it twice. So let me make this bigger so we can. Yeah. All right, so H2O, what that means, that two means I have H2O. Twice, okay? This two means that in each one of those, I have two H's. No number means I have one O in each of those. So I can do one of um, two things when I'm counting atoms. I can write it out like this. So if there's a big two in front of it, I can write how many ever it is. And then I'm going to say two H's plus two H's is four H's. So I have four H's. One O plus one O is four O's. I mean two O's. Or I can use math. And in math, we have something called the distributive property. To the distributive property, this 2 goes here. So 2 times 2 is 4. This 2 goes here. 2 times 1 is 1. So I have 4 H's. I have a total of Oops, two times one is two, not one. Two. Two O's. So that is what we're doing here. We're counting um, atoms. So we're going to look at this example. Na is one thing. So if you want to use colored pencils and use different colors to mark each of these, you can. C is one thing. And O is one thing. 
All right, each capital letter represents a new element. So I have NA. NA doesn't have a, one, a number there, so we know there's one. C doesn't have a number after it, we know it's one. O has a number after it, we know it is three. Now here they're telling you there are five total atoms. I don't care if you give me the total. I don't care about that. I'm concerned about this part right here, okay? Over here, look at this one. You have five, all right? And then I have a Zn, which goes together. I have a S, and I have a O. So notice over here, I have Zn, S, O. Notice that they took that five, and they did five times, five times, five times. So because that five is in front of it. I could write out ZNSO4 five times if I wanted to. But that's going to take longer. But you can do that. And then you can see I have five ZNs. I have five S's. And I have one, two, three, four, five fours. Five times four is 20. But if you put five times here, that's what the coefficient is, and then the number, there's no number, so it's one, no number one, the four will be four, and then do the math. I don't, I don't want the total down here, I just want you to count. So we're gonna do a couple of these together. I'm gonna do number one. Um, so first I'm gonna do is I'm going to look for each of the different um, letters. I have an N. Um, my H's I can put together because they're the same element. I have a C and I have an, oh, an O. All right, so I have N, I have H, I have C's, I have O's. All right, my N doesn't have a number there, so it has one. My H's, look at that. There's one that is a four and one that has a one, so four plus one is five. My C doesn't have a number, so it's a one. And my O has a three. So that is what all you're doing. So if it helps you to use colors, use colors. If you don't want to use colors, that's fine too. You can underline. And I guess we've run out of time. Um, so if you want to take that sheet and try it at home, you can. Can I go tomorrow? Because I have to go straight to work. Well, we and can't, I won't get off until well, 11. I don't know if we're going to have time to finish it in class because we keep moving. I could do it during, 